What I get wrong and the lessons I learn. It's marketing for owners. It's October. October. Can you believe it? Seems only yesterday we were introducing the spring and now it's the fall or autumn as we call it here in England. It is episode, oh, I don't know, 219 of the podcast. This is the podcast where I help you create your self-marketing company. The company that does its own marketing while you can get on with work or pleasure, whichever it may be. But in learning to create a self-marketing company, I've made mistakes. I've made lots and lots and lots of mistakes. For example, as you may have noticed in my recent podcast, I recently discovered <coughs> that although I'm not a perfectionist in the way I define a true perfectionist, certain aspects of perfectionism hold me back. They help me procrastinate. Now, that's another one of my faults and what I get wrong. I am an expert procrastinator. Personally, I think I'm lazy. Now, other friends tell me I'm not lazy. Of course, they don't know me. But I'm probably far too self-critical. And therefore, as, as I do a lot of work, at the times I am not working, I feel I should be working. And I actually feel, therefore, that I am procrastinating on things. However, one of the ways I kind of get around that is I, I obviously have staff uh, that work for me. And I think to myself, is this uh, something that somebody who works for me, who is paid to work for me, would do in their own time in an evening? Or would they say, that's work, I want to be paid? I look at it like that. If it's something they'd want to be paid for, <coughs> then maybe I shouldn't be doing it. It's, it's a tricky one. It's a merry-go-round and my head keeps me busy. What else do I get wrong? I am not a huge fan of dealing with, with people, with people problems. I like it when everything goes smoothly. So I'd rather delegate those things to people who are better than me. Because if I do it, I quite often get it wrong. Now, so I, it's not always necessarily that I don't want to do it. Some things you've got to man up. It's my business. I've got to man up and do it if it's got to be done. But quite often I handle it the wrong way. Not in a, in a bad way. I try to be too nice. <laughs> I don't like a lot. Don't want to upset people. And so give the wrong impression. So that's something I get wrong. But I'm aware... So I delegate it to smarter people than me. Now, another thing I get wrong, working on too many projects at one time. So if I've got 10 projects on the go, I am not going to be able to focus on any of them because as I'm starting one, I'm thinking, well, I can just start that other one as well. Now, recently, uh, I, I work on getting things done all the time. I mean, it's a major, major subject for the uh, small business owner and the entrepreneur of having fingers in many pies, too much going on. Where do you spend your time? So I put a lot of effort into learning how to do that. What I've learned recently is to write down um, every project you've got or, well, put it down to a maximum of 10. The fact that I say a maximum of 10 means that I know that generally we have more than 10 on our list. They may be on our to-do list. Uh, and if they don't get done, done those to-do lists only ever get things added to. They get longer and longer. And it's a kind of depressing, overwhelming thing. Uh, to a lot of people, it brings on depression. It brings on overwhelm, procrastination, et cetera, et cetera, and the doing nothing. So... Oh, and by the way, sorry if you can hear the wind. I'm recording this out in the garden. It's getting a bit breezy. But <clears throat> so what I've learned, thanks to Strategic Coach, remember I've said, get yourself a coach, get yourself a mentor, is write down 10 
of the projects you can think of that you are working on or that you want to be working on. Then select five. Pick five. Now, first of all, it makes you prioritize. And when you prioritize, you're going to pick five. You're going to leave five that you don't think are that import are important enough to get on your important list. Therefore, are they important at all? Can you delete them? You may be tempted to put them on a, I'll put that aside for another list, for when I've done these, I've got more. But I think to myself, just delete them. If they are that important, when you've done the first five and you need some more projects, they will still need to be done and will come up. You won't forget, it will be obvious. Or are they just fussy, nitpicking, tidy up a, uh, you know, the footer on your website or something like that that isn't going to generate money? So now I <coughs> mainly base my projects on what's going to bring in the money first. That's what business is all about. So uh, working, on, uh, working on that. And <coughs> then once I've got those five projects, I can get something going. I can decide these are the five. In actual fact, I shouldn't even really have five. Certainly not going to work on them all at the same time. But I might pick, there, there may be um, something I can outsource part of the project so it's ready for my bit. So I can outsource the start, get on with something else, and then the other bit's ready for when I want to start. <clears throat> but I'm making an effort to work on less things at once. That is going to move me forward. I've, um, I've said before, if I, can, if I can complete one project a week for myself, that's, that's five, uh, sorry, um, yeah, one project a week, that's four a month. That's almost 50 a year, 50 projects. That is definitely going to move me forward. I've got to be more patient. Are you patient? It's going to happen. Remember, I my, have my phrase that I like. The um, slow and steady wins the race. But despite that, I am still impatient because if I think an idea is good right now, I want it right now. It's like um, if I decide there's something in the store that I like, I don't think, oh, I'll come back and buy that in a couple of months. I want it now, that kind of thing. So all of these faults, all of these problems, all these things I get wrong, I've been developing, learning to get better. My advice to you is what do you get wrong? Consider what you get wrong and consider what you have done to make it better. Can you make it better still? Is it something you need to work on? Is it something you need to improve? In which case, get yourself a mentor or get yourself a coach. Have someone from the outside who can look at you, can talk to you. You don't need a shrink. You need someone in business, someone who you can look up to and respect what they say. Learn from them. Uh, learn from them and see what they can help you with. We all make mistakes all the time, but they're part of the learning process. Don't get over-concerned. We're always improving. Just make sure you've got someone to help you. Okay, end of that. It's Thursday, it's October. Time for a drive time podcast. Today, I'm going to have someone with a nice accent. Uh, it's David Bain, B-A-I-N, not the magician. And it's digital, uh, digital radio podcast. The guy's from Scotland. He's got a lovely accent, one of those Scottish accents you can understand. Their shows are half an hour. He's been doing them for a while. It's actually good. He has guests, he interviews, but he has a different, again, a different take. I like it when somebody has a different take on the way they do the interviews. Go listen to David, look him up. He's on iTunes. If you like him, and you should, give him a rating, give him a nice five-star review and tell him what you think. He gives it out for free. He's got a good website as well. David Bain, digital po radio podcast. You'll find him on iTunes, all right? And I'll see you tomorrow, Friday. Bye.